I'm Eric Johnson, a veterinarian from Marietta, Georgia. I'm going to bring you a brief talk from the car regarding test kits and a subject that I find interesting. Traffic right now is fairly shit-tastic, so I'm going awful slow and I have a minute. So, test kits is um, water testing. It's very important in the management of any fish health situation because when your fish are sick, you don't know whether it's a parasite or water quality. Unfortunately, most people go straight for the parasites when a fish are sick and they automatically start applying fish medicines all over the place um, without testing their water. And so a lot of times they're just treating low pH, for example, with clout. Uh, parasite treatment and of course getting nowhere and the fish die um, other times they're going to a lot of trouble and there's no need if the pH is low it's a simple thing to bring the pH back up I have a video on pH here on on the YouTube channel uh, for you to check out that would be cool um, but water test kits so they, they open a window to you to know what your water quality is doing and they they've got great test kits um, three different kinds actually. There's a drop type test kit, a dipstick test kit, and then an aquacultural test kit. And I'll explain the difference. The aquacultural test kit gives you values, uh, measurements of the ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, and all that other stuff to an accuracy within tenths of points. Very, very accurate for field studies looking for small deviations throughout the day of certain compounds and chemicals. The test kits usually involve two or three reagents, sometimes pieces of little blot paper. I mean, they're, they're pretty involved. A test kit like that, for example, is a HAC aquacultural test kit. It's a H-A-C-H -H test kit, uh, $600. Send me two. Um, the uh, next test kit is a drop type test kit, and I like those. They're all right. Uh, you put some of the water that you're going to test into a um, test tube and uh, put a chemical, whether it's a little tablet or a droplet or something, into the test tube of water, and it gives you... Sounds like an incoming EMP, doesn't it? Like on... Um, Oh, what's that movie with Keanu Reeves? Anyway, it's my infernal safety override brake situation. Anyway, um, so the drop type test kit uses a test tube, uses a test tube, and you put drops in it, and that gives you uh, pretty good accuracy. You might get within a half a point accuracy. So if you were concerned that, say, your ammonia was one, you might get one and a half or, or whatever. Um, but they're, they're, they're pretty good, but they take a minute. And you have to time them and, you know, all that. Well, then there's the my favorite. It's the dip stip test kit. And uh, it's basically just uh, you put it, take some water and you dip the stick in the water and, and then uh, pull it out. And the little uh, squares on the dip stick ma uh, match colors on the, um, the jar. And so, like, for example, if you're measuring ammonia, the ammonia test might show up bright yellow or something like that. And uh, all the pundits on the internet, um, the old guys at these uh, message boards, they're all just like, oh, you never want to use those test kits. They're so inaccurate. And uh, you could be off by three quarters of a point and blah, blah, blah. Well, see, that it, it doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why. Because you're not doing U.S. Fish and Wildlife study, uh, Service studies. You're not doing college thesis work where you need to be within a tenth of a tenth of a point. A drop type test kit could be a half a point off. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference. And when you use the dipstick test kits, that's fine. Do you know why? Because if your pH is low, it doesn't matter if it's five and a half or six. It doesn't matter if it's six and a half. If you've got koi and goldfish at pH of six, six and a half, five and a half, it doesn't matter. They're going to be hurting. So it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, so the pH is... Um, if, it, if the pH, basically, you just don't want it to be acid. You'd rather have it be alkaline or close to neutral and you're good. Ammonia test kits, for example, the ammonia dipstick test. If it's showing a positive, you've got something to do. It's, it's, I always make the analogy that 
to a certain extent, it's like if your smoke detector goes off and tells you that there's smoke, you're not gonna lay there in your bed and go, honey, I don't know if we should run out, because I, I really don't know how much smoke there is. So if, you, if you're doing an ammonia test kit, and it's ammonia dip test, and it's very quick and easy and inexpensive, and you get a positive, it doesn't matter if it's a one or a two, you've got some water changes to do. It's the same thing with the nitrites. Uh, nitrites being measured in a, on a tenth scale. But if you're starting to get nitrites at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it kind of doesn't matter. You've got water changes and man management of your filtration and biofilter to do. Nitrates, uh, another chemical that builds up in the water, and I've got videos on each of these. Uh, nitrate levels over 80 matter. So if the dipstick tells you you've got 60, you're good. And if it mis misread and it was 80, that's still good. If you're over 80, a lot of times you're not just over 80, you're usually around 100 and something. And when you get into those numbers, you've got to get your live plant action going on. You've got to get um, water changes and start maybe reducing your feeding a little bit, jack up your oxygen uh, levels to give the beneficial bacteria a chance. And um, grow some algae so okay the long and the short of this video regarding test kits there are aquacultural test kits that are very very expensive and provide you with a level of accuracy that you guys at home are not going to need and then there's the drop type test kits which are perfectly fine they just take extra steps you got glass test tubes that you could break um, they take a, an extra step and their accuracy is pretty good and then there's my quick test the ones I use um, for most hobbyist applications and that's a dip test where you just take a dip stick dip it in the water and look at the result compare it and color it to the to the, the jar that they came out of and um, so those are the three kinds of test kits, and I, I'm just challenging the need for so much accuracy uh, that these uh, purists and, and old fellas uh, on these message boards get so excited about this accuracy when really all you're looking for on the ammonia test kit, the pH and nitrite nitrate is kind of a positive or negative, a yay or nay as to whether or not you've got work to do on your water quality. So the take home from this basically is when you're testing your water, go ahead and use dip test kits. Tetra makes a good one. That's the one I use.